folks, welcome to week four of GID 109, Intro to Web Design. How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a good week. All right, so this week we are going to start something new. Let's hop over and take a look at our syllabus just to get sort of an idea of where we've been and where we are going next. All right, so, so far the first three weeks of this class we have really been introduced to a whole bunch of new concepts and tools and ways of doing things that maybe you're not super familiar with. So let's kind of recap briefly for a second. So in week one, we went over a brief history of the web, right? And we sort of covered the invention and evolution of what we call the web, dating all the way back to 1969 to the ARPANET all the way up through today and into the future into some speculative ideas about where the web is going. Uh, from that, you guys have started your progress on working on your historical and speculative paper. Uh, so by now, you are working on your background research uh, for that, uh, getting an idea of what area of the history of the web you want to focus on, what sort of an inquiry question you want to try to answer with your research, and what you're going to need for research and what you will eventually write about, and of course, create a digital poster for. So right now, you're sort of on the background research part of that. And this goes on for the next few more weeks. You're going to keep working on that in the background. I'm going to be checking in with everybody this week to sort of see how that progress is going because the background research is due. Now in week two, we went over all the various course tools, resources, and project structure. We talked about the HTML and CSS exercises that you guys are going to be working on on your own in the background using Code Academy. So hopefully by now you've gotten started on that. Soon in Blackboard, I'll be posting places where you can start to post screenshots of your progress for those little lessons. So that's good. Uh, we talked about the main pieces of software we're going to use in this class, which is Adobe XD in conjunction with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. We also took a look at some of the Apple design resources for web design, including their overall design resources page, their fonts and user interface guidelines, and of course the Apple developer site. So you should be familiar with that sort of uh, background content as well. Then last week in week three, we introduced you to the concept of user experience design, uh, which is sort of a broader umbrella term uh, that really encompasses much of what we're going to be doing in this class in terms of front end web design. But we specifically last week looked at the idea of usability testing, the UX workflow and wireframe mockups and talked about how you're going to be creating those for the two major projects you're going to do in this class, as well as engaging in some usability testing with some people you know who can give you some feedback on how good your web design is, at least based on the paper wireframes. Okay, now this week in week four, we are going to dive into our very first project, uh, a real life web design. So let's take a look at that in Blackboard. So all of the stuff we've covered so far was really just sort of a precursor and getting ready to really start working on the two major projects. Okay, so like I said, the first project is a real life redesign. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to modules. And we're going to hop over to module four, which is week four, of course. Okay, so this week, like I say, we're going to introduce not only the first project, but we're also going to introduce the workflow that we're going to use for not only this project, but our other project in class, which will be project two. So last week we took a look at a UX work design, uh, uh, US, UX design workflow, and just sort of talked about how there's generally a means in which people sort of follow certain steps in creating websites. Um, we have one specifically for this class, so we're going to look at that, and that is a handout down below here. We're obviously going to go over the handout for Project One in detail, so we'll go over that next. You do have some media to consume this week. There's an article right here. Uh, why having a UI UX workflow is awesome and how to build your own. This is from Medium, uh, which is a great writing platform. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to do so. So this is a really good article uh, by Hakam Mataher, uh, which is about sort of understanding the UI UX design process and why having a definitive workflow is actually really important. So read through this article. This is this week's textbook reading, as it were. Uh, make sure that you have consumed that early this week because it will help to uh, inform what we're doing going forward. Uh, like I said, due coming up really soon uh, is the historical speculative paper and digital poster part one, the uh, background research. Uh, let's take a look at when that is specifically due just so you can mark it on your calendar. So we'll go down to projects here, uh, go down to part one of the historical speculative paper background research 
And you can see here it's due Friday, October 2nd. So that's coming up in about a week. So make sure that you have that done. By now, of course, you should have picked which area of the history of the web you want to focus on, uh, started working on your background research, uh, have written your inquiry question, and really sort of started to plot that out. So again, that's due October 2nd. That's part one of the historical speculative paper. Don't let that slip by you. All right, so back to this week's module. Uh, your homework for this week will, of course, be to keep working on the historical speculative paper uh, and move into part two of that. But, uh, but we also are going to get rolling uh, at the same time on project one, our first big web design project, which we're going to look at in a second. Okay, handouts for the week. We have the web design workflow handout, which is right here, which we're going to look at in a second. We have uh, the web design project uh, workflow. Oh, actually, I have it twice here. Hmm, I have to eliminate one of these. We don't need two of these. Anyway, we want the web design project workflow, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to take a look at the ideation handout, which is just a, a side conversation about brainstorming and coming up with ideas for your projects. Now, the project itself, project one, can be found right here under modules and projects. If you go down to the projects folder, this is where all our projects live. And you want to scroll down until you get to project one, which is right here. Project one, a real life redesign. So that's what we're going to be working on. You can download the PDF right here if you want, which we're going to look at in a second. And it's broken down into multiple deliverables, which we'll take a look at. There are three deliverables for the project, meaning three times you have to turn something in. Okay, so that's sort of the general overview. Let's look at the actual project. Okay, so let's first look at the web design workflow handout. That's this one here, web design project workflow. Uh, this is the order in which you are going to do things in this project and the other project and the steps that have to be taken to complete the project. Like I said, there are three deliverables for pro per project. Three things you are going to turn in. So let's go over this. Okay, so there are two major web design projects in this class. Like I said, while each is different in theme and intent, you're going to follow this exact same web design UX project workflow outlined below for each. So we already talked about what a UX workflow is. We went over that last week, right? The steps in which you do things to get from the beginning concept of a project all the way up to your finished product. It's important to have a good workflow. It really doesn't matter what type of designer you are, whether you're an illustrator, a graphic designer, a web designer, or any other type of artist or designer. Having a workflow in place is important because it gives you measurable steps and stops along the way that you can sort of check in on your progress, share what you've been working on with other people, get feedback, and move on. And this is true either in school or out in the professional world. It doesn't matter either way. Now, of course, there's not one perfect type of workflow. I can't tell you that there's only one way to do this. Each place you work at, each class you take will have different workflows. And then working on your own independently, you can sort of develop your own workflow, of course. Uh, but either way, it's a step-by-step -step system or systems that really works best for you. So this is the one that we're going to use in this particular class. So I created this little bubble chart data visualization, which goes over our workflow. As you can see here, there are 11 steps in the workflow. Now, again, there are only three deliverables. You're only turning in three things, um, but there are seven steps. So the first step, of course, is to introduce the project. That's what we're doing today. We're going to introduce project one as soon as we're done with this. Next, you're going to do sort of a needs assessment, right? And then you're going to do your research, your background research. And then step four, uh, you're going to work on your ideation or brainstorming steps, which we'll talk about in a minute. Then you get into step five, and you're going to do some sketching and wireframes, right? We talked about sketches and wireframes last week. Uh, and then you're going to go out and do your usability testing, which is step seven. You're going to put your paper wireframes in front of some people and have them answer some basic questions and do some simple tasks and see how well they complete those. Those are going to be part of your usability testing. Now, you'll notice here that in the workflow diagram that once you finish usability testing, you don't necessarily move right on to the next step. In fact, you'll notice the next step is not even step eight. It jumps to step nine. So what happened to step eight? 
Well, that's because sometimes when you finish your usability testing, you might get some feedback that says, I have to go back and redo some things. I have to go back to the drawing board, as it were, and maybe redo some of these steps. So if you get some people in your usability testing who are a little confused, they can't follow the steps, maybe it turns out that your visual design on paper isn't as clear as you would like it to be, well, then you're going to follow the yellow line here and go back to step eight, and that is the repeat section. So maybe go back and do more research, maybe try some new ideation or brainstorming techniques, maybe do some more sketches or update your existing sketches. Same thing with the wireframes. Maybe update them, make some changes, or do some new ones. And then go back and guess what? Usability test again. Now, this isn't to say you will have to do this on every project. It really depends on the responses you get from your usability testers. Now, if everybody can follow the steps that you put in front of them clearly and they're perfectly happy with it, well, then you can move right on to the next step, which is step nine. You don't have to go back and repeat anything. You can skip right over step eight. Now, step nine is where we start creating the visual artwork for the prototype, which we're going to do in Adobe XD as well as Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. You're going to build your prototype in Adobe XD and then you will be publishing your prototype through Adobe XD. So really, once we get to the green section, into the purple section here, you're working almost completely in Adobe XD with Photoshop and Illustrator being used as supplemental software to help create either graphics or photographic content that you might need. Before we get to the green section, we're doing everything on paper. We're working maybe in Microsoft Word, you're doing your wireframes on paper, so we don't really get to the software until we're down here into step nine, okay? Now, now that we understand sort of the flow in terms of the data visualization, let's take a look at the three things you're going to turn in. Now, you're not turning in seven, uh, rather 11 things. That would be too many things to turn in. These are just the steps you're going to take to get through the process, but you're only turning in three different things. So here are the three deliverables for each project as part of the workflow. Deliverable one are written responses to steps one through three, right? And sketches from step four. So steps one through three are we're going to introduce the project. So write down any notes you might have on the introduction, any questions you might have for me or whatnot. If it's perfectly clear, then that's good. Then you're going to do a needs assessment. We talked about what that was last week, right? Based on the way the project is presented to you, you're going to make a list of the needs that the client seems to want this project to accomplish or to address. What are they trying to, to succeed at here? And then, of course, number three is your research. Now, you don't have to show me all of your research in the first deliverable. Just kind of write me a paragraph or two about where you did your research, what kind of research you did, and what you found. And then lastly, you're going to do some sketches for your ideation, whether it be uh, flow charts or bubble charts or mind maps or uh, whatever you're going to do for your ideation steps. You're going to put those together and bundle this all together into one deliverable. You can do this all in a Microsoft Word document. And then you're going to turn that in as your first deliverable. So really just sort of your background stuff that you're doing. Okay. Then the second deliverable is basically going to be step six and seven bundled together. And that's going to be your wireframes and your usability testing report, right? So the wireframes that you put together on paper that you put in front of your usability testers and, of course, the report from your actual usability testing. That's your second deliverable, the second thing you're going to turn in. And then last but not least, the third thing you're going to turn in for the project is your full prototype of the actual website uh, in Adobe XD and then published online. Now, I'm going to show you how to do all this as we go along, but I just wanted to let you know those are the three deliverables, okay? And you can check the due dates in Blackboard to see when all three deliverables are due. Okay, now we're going to go through these steps in more detail, okay? So that was just an overview. Okay, so <clears throat> project one. I mean, sorry, step one for the project introduction. So today I'm going to introduce the project. All you really have to do here is listen and take some notes. Easy. Number two, needs assessment. You're going to review the project handout a couple of times and begin to ask yourself some questions about the client and the proposed project. What problems are the client trying to solve with this web design project? What type of content does the client expect to see on their website? What are the project specifications known as specs? Okay. Number three, uh, go and do some research. Using reliable sources from the web and or the library, you're going to conduct research and answer some more questions that you yourself pose. This is a self-directed research, right? 
So answer questions such as, what is your client all about? What are their goals? What do they do best? Who is their intended audience? Be sure to research some similar organizations to their competition. Don't just look at the one organization that you're going to be working on the website design for. Take a look at who their competition is and just sort of get used to it, right? Get to know their industry and how that is represented best on the web. So really, you're sort of soaking in a bunch of research here. Not to become an expert in this, not to be able to regurgitate this verbatim, but simply to be able to just become familiar with it so you know what you're talking about when it comes time to actually design the website. All right, step four. Uh, step four is time to use your imagination and start to brainstorm ideas about what your client's website might look like, the content it will have, and how it will be visually presented. Your initial needs assessment and research should drive this brainstorming or ideation practice. There are really no bad ideas at this stage. You're just going through as many concepts as you can, right? So just like when you're working on a graphic design project, you might sit down and do 25 to 30 thumbnail sketches and just get out as many ideas as you can. They're not all great. They're not all perfect solutions, but you're just getting them all out of your head onto paper. This is the same sort of thing. You're just doing a whole bunch of brainstorming techniques to just really get through as many ideas for the website as you can. And then the last step in this stage is some sketching, which, is, which goes hand in hand with the ideation. You're going to start creating sketches of your best ideas. You can do this on paper, in your notebook. Uh, keep these loose and fast, create as many iterations as you can. We're not making finished artwork here, just loose, rough sketches that is basically going to take all the questions you were asking during the needs assessment, all the stuff you learned in the research, and all your ideation and brainstorming efforts, and just getting them out on paper as best you can. So wring out as many ideas as you can. So once you finish these five steps here, then you're going to bundle it all together into your first deliverable. So you're going to submit a document that contains your written responses to steps one through three, as well as your sketches from step four. Okay, so put that all together. Now, a good running Microsoft Word document is probably the easiest way to do this, right? Open up a Microsoft Word document and just start completing these steps right there in Microsoft Word. Now, obviously, when you get to the sketching part, you're going to be doing that by hand on paper. So that you can't do in Microsoft Word necessarily. But once you finish your sketches, you can simply photograph them. If you're going to photograph them with your phone, just make sure you're doing it in some good lighting and you sort of stand over it so you get a nice clear shot of it. Uh, maybe shoot them outdoors if it's a nice sunny day. And then you can just uh, drag and drop those photos right into the Microsoft Word document and include it. So you're going to turn that whole thing in. And that's basically sort of like your research packet, right? It'll have your needs assessment questions, a little paragraph about your research, some ideation and brainstorming that you did, as well as a bunch of loose sketches. Okay, so that's the first deliverable. Then, next thing we'll do is we'll then move on to wireframes and usability testing. So, based on some of the best sketches that you did up here, right, you're going to take some of your loose sketches and you're going to sort of determine which ones you think work best. You're going to then create a set of wireframe drawings, and now these you can use Adobe Illustrator to create if you would like, uh, and then print them out, or you can do it on graph or dot paper using pencils and ruler, uh, just like we showed in the examples last week. The, make sure Either way, whether you create them digitally or on paper, make sure that they are neat and detailed, showing only one page of your website per piece of paper or per, per artboard. So you'll have a stack of paper that you can then put in front of your usability testers, okay? So you choose whether you wanna make your wireframes digitally or in paper, it doesn't matter to me, but they just have to be super neat and organized, okay? And, if, and again, if you're unsure what wireframes look like, go back and look at the examples from last week. Next, once you have your wireframes in place, you're gonna grab two people uh, and do your usability testing. So uh, as I said last week, by now you should probably have identified a couple of people who can help you out. It can be people you live with, your roommates, friends, family, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Anybody who's willing to help you out with this program, with this process. So you're gonna follow the usability testing guidelines in the what is usability testing handout that we went over last week, okay? So if you're unsure how to do your usability testing, we covered it last week. There's a video that goes over it, and of course you can go back and reread the What is Usability Testing handout. Okay, once you have completed these two steps, you will then submit Deliverable 2, which is you're going to submit your final wireframes. Again, if they're on paper, make sure you give me nice clean photographs of them. 
And if they're, if they're done in Adobe Illustrator, export those as PDFs so that you can turn them in for me. And of course, make sure you fill out a good usability testing report um, using Microsoft Word and then turn that in too. That is your second deliverable. Okay, we talked about the repeating part, so we won't go over that again. But again, depending on the results of usability testing, you may have to go back and repeat some steps. Uh, but that it depends on how well your usability testers understand what you're asking them to do. Okay, and then the last stage is creating the artwork, uh, which we can start in Adobe Illustrator, uh, creating sort of all the visual elements that are going to appear on your website, everything from sort of buttons to graphics to just choosing your color palette and your font choices that you're going to use. Then we're going to start building our prototype in Adobe XD. We're going to finish the prototype in XD. We'll make sure that it's functional and then we'll publish it. Now we'll get into much more detail on this section later on because that's a couple of weeks down the road. We have time to do that. But just so you know, that's what's going to make up deliverable three, which is your final full prototype, uh, which can then be submitted via Blackboard. Okay, so that's our workflow. These are the steps we're going to follow. There's a lot of steps. Make sure you follow each and every one of them and make sure you hit your deadlines, okay? So check in Blackboard when things are due. If you're not sure how to do that, let's go back and take a look at this, right? So under projects, which is right here, under modules and projects, there's the projects folder. So if we go to the first project, right? A real life redesign. So the first deliverable is right here. Click on that. And you'll see that that is due Friday, October 9th. So you've got time. So you can get working on the first deliverable, which are the initial steps, right? Then part two of project one is due right here. That's not due till October 23rd. So again, these projects are big, they're long, we have lots of time to work on them, but check all the dates and make sure that you're getting stuff done on a regular basis. So even if there's nothing specifically due that week, you got to keep working on it, okay? All right, so moving on. Now that we've gone over the workflow that we're going to use for both Project 1 and Project 2, let's take a look specifically at Project 1, okay? So Project 1, right here, again, you can find it in the Modules and Projects uh, part of Blackboard. All right, so this here is Project 1. This is the handout for it. You can also see it right on Blackboard. So again, it's called a real-life redesign. So let's go over this. It's just a one-page document. It's pretty simple, okay? Um, okay, so developing a website for a company of any size can take a long time, months, years even. Uh, this is to say nothing of the cost or the amount of people who worked on it. As such, it's really not that surprising that most companies are really not in a big hurry to redesign an existing website, no matter how old or ineffective it has become. So the fact of the matter is that a lot of times people make a website for their company or their organization, and then they kind of forget about it. They don't really update it on a regular basis. They certainly don't put time and effort into redesigning it because, frankly, they're busy just running their business. They have other things to do. If you're a pizza parlor and you're making pizza, you're going to focus on making pizza. You're not going to really update your website on a regular basis. So whatever it is that you do, you that takes most of your time and energy. And so it's easy to understand why some companies just sort of forget about their website and let it languish. And the truth of the matter is that is not just true of small companies. It happens with midsize and even some big companies that are well known. They just don't get around to keeping their websites up to date. But like most graphic design projects, whether it be a logo design or branding or posters or advertisements, or whatever, you've got to do new versions from time to time. You've got to keep up. You've got to make sure that they are timely and accurate to whatever your company's message and content is at the time, and websites are no different. It's just that website projects are generally so big that people sort of forget about them or, more accurately, avoid them. Now, what we're going to do in this project is you are going to identify a company that you really like. It can be a retailer, it can be a major company, it can be a small town falafel restaurant, it could be a nonprofit organization, a municipality, sort of like you know uh, the, the, the website for the town you live in. It should also be a company whose website you think is in need of an overhaul. Maybe it's outdated, maybe it's not attractive to look at, maybe the content is confusing and the navigation is, is really troubling and you can't find your way around easily. 
Uh, perhaps the visual design looks out of date. Uh, maybe the navigation is just really terrible and the content just doesn't work for you. Uh, maybe the media that they use, everything from photography to video to maps or whatever, maybe that's just poorly implemented. Whatever it is, or maybe it's the whole site. Maybe the whole site's just a mess. You've got to pick a website that you think really needs an overhaul, okay? Uh, you're going to document all of these shortcomings, meaning not only are you going to pick the website, but you're going to sit down with your Microsoft Word document open, and you're going to do sort of a point-by-point -point analysis. Go through the whole website and just make bullet points of what you think is wrong with it. Now, again, there's no wrong answers here. This is really just your sort of semi-professional design opinion, right? You guys have been taking design classes long enough. You know what you're talking about. So check out the website and just be like, well, that title doesn't really work very well. The logo is unclear. There's way too much content to read. They don't use bullet points well. The photos are terrible. Or maybe there's not enough photos. Just go through it and be really hypercritical in a professional way, of course. Don't write terrible things about them, but, you know, be, do a nice job of really breaking down all the shortcomings. You're going to sort of start thinking about how you can make it better. You're going to devise a plan, and then ultimately you're going to design them a new and improved website prototype using our web design project workflow that we talked about. All right, so here's your basic steps, your preparation steps, prep steps. So again, research the chosen company. So starting this week, starting right now, go out there and find a website that you think needs an overhaul. You should really start with something that you are already familiar with, maybe something that's part of your life or related to where you live, and that'll give you a good starting point. You can't just go in looking for all bad websites because there's so many of them out there. So I really want you to pick something that you have some kind of connection to in your real life. Uh, learn about what they do and how they do it. Get to know the company or the organization that is represented by this website. Okay, So really research that chosen company or organization. Next, like I said, step two is you're going to do a thorough review of their current website. Uh, look closely at how the elements and pages look and function. And you can do all of this, all of these prep steps uh, you can do in Microsoft Word. Okay, uh, List and annotate all of their site shortcomings. Like I said, go ahead and just start making a list of all the things you think don't work well in that website. Right? And annotations, of course, just mean put in your opinion. Tell me what, why it doesn't work. So if you think that the, you know, the news section at the top of the page doesn't work, don't just say the news section doesn't work. Explain why it doesn't work. What do you think is the problem with it? Uh, and then lastly, of course, you're going to begin your redesign of their website following our web design project workflow, which we'll get into afterwards, okay? Okay, so some basic specifications. Uh, what exactly are we redesigning? Well, we're not redesigning the entire website. We don't have time for that. This is really a prototype or a proof of concept, okay? So you're gonna redesign the home page, also known, of course, as the index page, right? Uh, from a file point of view, uh, home pages or landing pages on websites are listed as index.html, right? So that would be the main landing page that the web browser knows to go to when you navigate to it through the domain name. Uh, so you're going to redesign the home page and two other pages of your choice, minimum. If you want to design more than two pages, that's fine too. But honestly, I would encourage you just to stick with these three pages because I'd rather you spend more time on the quality of the redesign, not so much the quantity of overhauling the whole site. Uh, that's not really what the point of this project is. So in the end, you're going to you will have redesigned three pages, the home page, and you pick which other two pages you think need a massive overhaul. Okay, if you are creating a scrolling site, uh, make sure you include a minimum of three equal height sections. So if you're if you're not doing a page by page website, you do have to do three pages. Uh, so on a scrolling site, of course, it would be the landing section of the scrolling site, the part that appears when you first navigate there. And then as you scroll down, two more sections, okay? Uh, you must use the company's actual logo and branding elements, which you can pull directly from the web. Uh, you should be able to just get those from Google, uh, Google Image Search, or if you right-click or control-click on the elements from their existing web page, you should be able to pull those graphics right onto your computer, uh, or at least try to replicate them as much as you can. Uh, you are free to alter, edit, or completely replace any of the content on their existing website. So any photos or copy that they use, you can reuse, or if you want to start from scratch, you can do that. You don't have to put in actual copy if you don't want. You can use sort of dummy copy or lorem ipsum to fill space. 
you're not really a copy editor here. I don't expect you to write paragraphs of information. So you can use uh, written information that's already on their website, or if you just want to use lorem ipsum to fill space, that's fine. Uh, for simplicity, all of the website redesigns will be created at this ratio, 1920 by 1080. I know there's other ratios you can design websites at, but I want us all to be on the same page, literally. Um, so uh, we're going to build it at 1920 by 1080. And of course, if it's a scrolling website, then the first above the fold section, the part of the website that you land on first will be 1920 by 1080. And then as you scroll down, there'll be additional sections from there. Okay. All right, so that's the specs. It's pretty straightforward, really. So all you're going to do right now, oh, by the way, there's an interesting article to read at the end here, Five Excellent Website Redesigns, uh, which will give you a really good overview of some websites that have been redesigned, showing you the before and after photos. So certainly check that out. That'll give you a good idea. Okay, so all you're doing right now, this week, in week four, is go out and identify a company that you really like and start doing your prep steps. Get these done as soon as you can. So go do your research and get rolling on these steps. I shouldn't even say four steps. It's really these first three steps right here. So get those done. All right. So once again, keep working on your historical speculative digital paper. Uh, that is due part two. The secondary source is coming up and the background research part one is due on October 2nd. So keep working on that. And of course, start working on project one, uh, do those early prep steps. And if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, or whatnot, be sure to email me or drop in Monday or Friday to my online Zoom office hours. I would love to see some of you. I haven't seen any of you yet, so please make a point of doing that. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you soon.